You are watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, dental implants. According to my first guest, no more dentures. You can get a fixed set of teeth in just a few appointments. With us, we have North Carolina's dental implant dentist, Dr. Robert Stanley. Dr. Stanley, welcome to the program. Thank you, Randy. Pleasure to be here. Now, before we get into today's topic, uh, for people that don't know your office, uh, and we've had your wife on the show, cosmetic dentist, um, who's the typical patient and uh, you know what are the different procedures that you do? Well, in our practice, uh, my wife and I practice together, and that affords us a, a very unique position to allow Bobby to focus on certain aspects of dentistry and allow me to focus on other aspects. So you do everything, I guess, right there. We We're do. just about everything in dentistry. That's correct. We, we do uh, from oral surgery, from simple extractions to wisdom teeth extractions, uh, to implant placement, of course, um, to uh, orthodontics, to veneers, to crowns, uh, invisible braces, uh, whitening, tooth whitenings, and of course we, we still do uh, regular fillings and bondings. Uh, for cavities. Okay. So you're, so her role in the practice is more of the cosmetic side? Correct. She do, I like to say that she does the things that people want to come to us for. <laughs> okay. And that I do root canals and extractions and, and um, uh, procedures like that that people are typically not all that interested in coming to see us for. And, and with dental implants, you do the surgical? That's correct. We work, we work together uh, with Bobby's extensive background in, in uh, cosmetics. It doesn't make any sense for me to touch that area. I let her do her thing. She's she's the best at it, and I focus on the surgical side of things. And for people just tuning in, when you say Bobby, that's your your wife who's a dentist. Correct. What are the patients? I mean, they, I mean, do they call you Doctor? They call me Doctor Rob. They call her Doctor okay. Bobby, and uh, if, okay. they, if they get it wrong, it, we we answer to both. Okay, good. So so let's talk a little bit about your background and training. Okay. Uh, I, I guess you, you got a PhD in uh, in engineering. Correct. And uh, when did you know you wanted to be a dentist? How did you become a dentist? Well, interesting enough, when I was a child, I, I wanted to be a dentist. My grandfather was right. a dentist. Okay. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, my grandfather passed away early when I was about seven. And when he passed away, uh, the family stopped talking about dentistry, uh, quite honestly. So uh, my aspirations and, and drive to become a dentist kind of went to the wayside. And, um, and then through school, uh, I became a very good problem solver. And typically, if you're a good problem solver, you get pushed into the, the math and science area. You become, you become an engineer, which means right. problem solver. Uh, but it turns out that problem solvers are excellent dentists because okay. we solve problems every day. People come in with a sore tooth. They don't know what's wrong, and we need to figure it out. And we do a bunch of series of tests, and then we come up with a diagnosis, and we say, we know what's wrong. So problem solving is great for dentistry. Okay, now, so did you meet your wife in dental school? That works with you? I was in, uh, I was finishing my master's at NC State, and uh, Dr. Bobby was uh, in her uh, second year of dental school at the University of North Carolina. So, uh, two competing uh, universities in our okay. state. And uh, so, of course, you guys hit it off. You said, hey, my grandfather was a dentist, and. Uh... Yep, we, we, we hit it off from the beginning. And when, when I got done with my doctorate, I actually went out and worked in uh, corporate America for a telecommunications company for seven years. And during that time, I was always teasing Bobby that I wanted to go back to dental school. And she kept saying, well, you put 11 years into college. Why don't you work for a while and see what you think? So uh, after about seven years, she said, enough already. Uh, so she's a dentist. You're married. She's a dentist. We're and married. And you're a practicing engineer. Correct. Interesting. Yeah. And then you said, I want to be a dentist. I came home one day and I said, I'm going to do it. And she <laughs> said, well, go ahead and do it. If you're going to do it, do it now. <laughs> and so the next day I went to work and, and tendered my resignation. All right, all right. Good. Good. What do you like about it now that you didn't anticipate it, by the way, or that you didn't anticipate? What I didn't anticipate is how close I would become uh, to the patients. Okay. Um, when I was working in the corporate world, I, I uh, was a project manager. They made me a project manager, which means you don't do as much of the engineering part anymore, and you do more people work. But when I went into dentistry, I really became intimately involved in people's lives on, on a day-to-day -day -day basis, and uh, that is something that I really very much improve, uh, very much enjoy. Okay, good. Okay, so no more dentures. We said that at the top of the show. Right. You believe that. I mean, you think that's the future of dentistry as far yep. as dentures as we know them right now? I do. Elaborate I really on that. do. Well, um, you know, we use an analogy in our office uh, for dentures, and people say, you know, Doc, I've had enough of these teeth. I just want them out. Just take them out. And uh, oftentimes I say, look, I'm going to... I can do that for you, but I need to explain something to you. If I was to cut off your hand and give you a plastic hand and some chopsticks and say, go eat dinner, 
you'd have a hard time with that. And it's very difficult for people to, to understand that when we take out your teeth and give you plastic teeth, that's about the equivalent. It's very difficult for people to, to function with dentures. Now they'll say to me, they'll say to me, yeah, but my mother, my mother, she never had any problems with her dentures. And I'll say to her, I'll say to them, did you ever ask? Because most of the time, people will, will not go around complaining to their, to their family. Point. I mean, I know people with dentures and they don't say a word. They don't. They don't. They, so you're saying they when they come to it. you, they pretty much tell you, I can't stand these things. That's right. And, 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 it's, and, and it's part biological. You know, I have this, this model here. Okay. And okay. this model here shows um, where you start off with your jaw when you're young. And as you grow, grow old, if you lose your teeth, you lose the bone. So the bone is there for one reason, and that's to hold the teeth. Okay. Once you lose the teeth, the bone doesn't need to be there, and it starts to go away. And so when this bone goes away, you no longer have an area for the denture to hold onto. And without that tension... So it becomes loose. It comes loose, and it's popping out all the time. So you, you don't think there's such thing as a happy denture wear? Uh, I think there are tolerant denture wearers. I don't, I don't think they're really happy. I think they tolerate it. So let's begin with the different type of dental implant patients that you see, the categories, if you had to categorize them. Sure. So we have patients that come in that are missing one tooth. We have patients that are missing uh, a few teeth. Uh, sometimes they, their teeth are in the mouth, but they're loose and they know that they need to come out. And then we have patients that uh, don't have teeth that have been wearing de dentures either for a short period of time or for a long period of time. So what are the age ranges of, of like the denture wearers? Sure. How old can you be to do this? You know, the, there is really no age. Um, our oldest patient in our office is 80 years old. 80 getting uh, dental implants? 80 years Why old. Why would they want to do that though? You know, um, her main reason was she was embarrassed. She was going to um, her lunches with her friends and her lower denture just wouldn't stay in. And while she's chewing, the dentures moving around in her mouth and it's embarrassing to her. And so while they're out at lunch uh, with their friends, the dentures can slide around, they can make popping and clicking noises, and it's apparent to other people that you've got a denture and it's embarrassing. In fact, uh, this one particular patient was telling me that she doesn't even go out sometimes to some of her lunches uh, because she's embarrassed. She actually stays in more. Okay, so what, how many people do you think are within your area are wearing dentures? Oh, by the thousands, way? there's thousands of people in North Carolina that are wearing dentures currently. Okay, and, and, and you're saying with as little as two dental implants? That's correct. Give them something to snap in, something secure, snap in, snap out. That's right. So, uh, you know, when we talk about implants, we can start off with as little as two, uh, and then the more implants we add, the better the, the, better the denture is going to work the more fixed it's going to be. So if you were to allow me to put six implants in, I can give you your third set of teeth. I can give you a fixed set of teeth. A full arch of teeth. A full arch. Is that right? That will stay in. You don't have to take it out at night. You still have to clean it, but you can leave it in. And uh, for all practical purposes, no one would know that you even had a denture. But what if somebody, you know, because I anticipate this interview, you know, I've talked to some people, but what if somebody has been in dentures 30 years and you showed a bone chart how you lose bone. Right. Too old no, to do it? No. Uh, even if they've lost bone? Even if they lost bone. Interesting. The, the, the most important thing is that we, in placing dental implants is that we have enough bone. And if we have enough bone, we can place the implants. So what we do is we take a special scan that shows us the volume of bone. Once we see the volume of bone, if there's volume there, we can do it. Now, if you've lost the bone, we can go through a bone growing process. And it takes a little bit of time, it takes a few months to grow the bone, but at the end, you get a fixed. Have you ever met a patient that's not a candidate for dental implants? Not to date. Uh, so far, if, if they've walked through my door and they've sat down and we've talked, uh, we've been able to place uh, dental implants on just about everybody. Seems very painful though, Oh, to do the procedure. You know, that's, uh, that's one of the misnomers about dental implants. Uh, dental implants are very painless. Okay. Uh, a lot of people believe that though, because the, the, the sound, the, the, the thought of placing a that dental implant, terrible. yeah, sounds very, very tra uh, traumatic. But in our office, as I mentioned, we have these special scans and these scans that show us the volume of bone also allow us to do virtual planning of the implants. And virtual planning of the implants is, is where we take the computer and we do all of the surgery on the computer, okay. in the computer. And when we're done with that, we, have, we send a command to a company that makes us a surgical guide. Now this surgical guide 
tells us exactly where to place the dental implant and how deep to place the dental implant. And what this does is it minimizes the trauma to the patient. So in the old days, before this technology, people would go in there and they'd have to do a lot more digging around. People meaning other dentists. Other dentists okay. would have to go in and they'd have to, re- what we call lay a flap or reflect the tissue. So cut the gums. Cut the gums. Peel the gums back to see the bone so you could place the implant where but you see it. that's still being done today though. It is. Is that right? It is. Not in your office. It's not done in our office. It, that's correct. In so our office, we use a guide which, which basically when we're done, the only thing you see is a small little silver cap. There's no trauma to the, to the gums at all. And they can eat, chew? Yep. Even if you're 80 years old, like you say, you did the 80 year old patient. Absolutely. How, how soon could they eat? You can eat that night. You can eat that night. You'll, you'll have a little bit of soreness and you will be taking uh, some ibuprofen. But I had a patient who I placed two implants on the lower left. I called him that night to check on him. And he was out on his front porch with his wife <laughs> drinking a Coca-Cola. And he said, why are you calling me? And I said, I was just checking on you. And he said he wasn't even taking the ibuprofen. The bone that, okay. doesn't have a lot of nerve in it. And so when we place these implants inside the bone, there's not a lot of nerve. Is pain a big fear, by the way? It's a huge fear, a huge fear. A uh, lot of folks don't, don't know that, that a dental implant can be placed with minimal pain. In fact, a tooth extraction is much more uh, painful than a dental implant being placed okay. by far. Now, now in your area, let's say within an hour of your practice, would you say there's a thousand people with an upper lower denture? Thousands of people? Thousands. So if dental implants are as good as you say they are, why aren't they all doing it? Why aren't they all rushing in and doing it? That's a good question, Randy. There's, there's a number of reasons why folks aren't coming uh, to, the, to the dentist. And one of them is, is that when you lose your teeth and you get a denture, you don't go to the doctor, you don't go to the dentist as often as okay, you used to. that's a good to. point. Right. So you don't go every six months like you used so to. So they don't know, I guess. So they don't know. Okay. So they don't get educated. They don't have that opportunity. So that's one reason. Another reason is, is that by the time you get to the point where you've lost all your teeth, you've gone through planing and, uh, root, uh, scaling and root planing, you've gone through extractions, you've gone through gum grafts, uh, you've gone through root canals and failed cr- uh, crowns. All of this stuff leads up to... So the last thing they want to do is go to... They dinner. don't want to go anymore. They, they say, point. I'm done, I'm done, I've got the dentures and I'm done. So the thought of having to go back, I guess. Correct. That's correct, okay. Randy. They, they, that's the last thing they want to do is go back to a dentist and bring up the memories that they had from, from when they were going before. So what's changed? Why is it what used to take you guys six months with dental implants? now you can do in a short period of time, in a visit or two, and, and I guess the same day in some cases. Well, there's a couple of things that have changed. One, one thing that's changed is that the, the guided surgeries that we spoke about allow us to minimize the trauma. Okay. And when we minimize the trauma, the healing's quicker. Good, okay. So, so that's one thing. The second thing is, is the imaging itself. And the imaging allows us to see the bone and the soft tissues and design it in a way where we don't have any sort of complications. Okay. And yet another reason uh, for quicker turnaround times are the design of the implants. The whole industry has evolved in the last 15 years at, at phenomenal rates. So we have new surface treatments on the dental implants that allows the bone to grab onto these implants a whole lot quicker than we've ever seen before. All right, now, you know, and, and people need to know this is a real interview, and I'm not endorsing you or trying to endorse you, but, you know, with what I know, and, you know, our show airs all over the U.S. and Canada, I've interviewed a few people, but how you do it at your office with dental implants is very unique. Uh, I, I guess normally three people may be involved, and correct me if I'm wrong. They go to the, the dentist that does the surgery, then they go somewhere else for the imaging, the CT, and then they go to the person that puts a cap on top of the tooth. That's right. You do it all in one place. That's right. So one of the things that people don't like is they don't like going to multiple uh, providers to get their treatment done. Um, In our office, we have that ability to offer both the surgical portion. So you have a scanner right there? We have a a scanner right there in the office. We can take the scan, then we can do the surgery. We can do the surgery with IV sedation for folks that are are nervous. And then we can do the the process work right there. And that's the tooth that goes on? The and that's final normally proof. done with two different people? Yes, quite Is oftentimes right? it can be three people. So yeah. you can have an oral surgeon who's involved, you can have a general dentist involved, and you can have a prosthodontist that's involved. 
So what happens when you get more people in the mix is that there's possibilities, there's opportunities for things to get dropped. And okay. so, and, and that those things that get dropped can be picked up again, we can run with those things, but what ends up happening is it, it ends up creating delays in the process. So it's a shorter period of time if you're going to Absolutely. one place. One place in the, so the whole Because people don't like going to the dentist. Streamlined. Do they tell you that, by the way? They do. No offense, doctor. Quite often. Do they really say that? How do they say it? Well, usually they say, uh, doc, this, uh, this injection is really something I don't look forward to. And that's uh, probably about 100% of our patients. Okay, okay. So let's, you brought some models. What are the different options for denture wares? So we, we spoke earlier about denture wares and how many implants you might need. So okay. it's, it's, an, it's very important to understand that a denture wearer can start off with simply two implants and get really, really good results from that. And I brought some models. Okay. And do you show this to patients when they're there? I, very, I do. Same thing, okay. Absolutely, so these are the models we actually show. So these are acrylic models. So this is a model of a lower jaw. Okay. And what is in this model are, are simply two dental implants placed in the front of the so mouth. So like right here? Right there. Okay. And what this allows us to do is there's some retain, retentive devices inside the denture. Interesting. That snap right down on there. And you get that on there, that will not come out. You, you have to get your thumb underneath here to get this Let's out. Let's take a look. So, so no more adhesive or anything else. And this is actually what they would be like. Okay. And does it ever get too tight but they can't even take it out it can it sure can there are different o-rings that we can use so it actually can get so tight that we have to change the o-rings out to a softer o-ring so the future at the top you know at the top of the show we were saying that the future of dentistry is no more dentures dentures as we know them do you think they'll all be secured whether it's 20 years or whatever all dentures will be secured by some sort of something like a dental implant i think do that, you think that'll happen i do think that will happen and i'll tell you why when we have patients that get these implants placed their stories after they come back are so powerful that they're telling everyone. Like, what do they say? I had a patient who told her sister that she'd gotten these implants done and that they were so wonderful that her sister came in and had the same procedure done next week. Is that right? That's right. Do they tell you eating stories? They like, do. doctor, I could eat this or eat that? They do. Oftentimes folks will come in and they'll ask, hey doc, can I eat steak with these? Now with two implants, maybe not steak because it still has some mobility but the more implants we place the more stable we get so if someone says to me doc can we can i eat steak i want to eat steak again i say well we need a little bit more than two implants. so the next level up is for four that. four implants and a fixed prosthesis it's commonly referred to in the in the industry as all on four so a full arch of teeth full arch okay. of teeth on four implants now you can do that but there's some drawbacks and that is that you're you're replacing 16 teeth in your mouth with four implants, and that puts a lot of load on those implants, which increases the patient's risk. Risk of what? The risk of losing an implant, one of these implants becoming loose. Okay, okay. Or fracture of the prosthesis. So what we like to do is we wanna minimize risk, and we minimize risk by simply adding two more, two more implants. All right. So if we go to six implants, like in this model right here, you do two, two, and two, now we have good distribution of these implants and we have six and they're distributed in, in, in a way where the load isn't so high and so you don't get breakage of the, of the prosthesis and you don't lose the implants. So it's like a fixed set of teeth, it's like getting your teeth back. It, it's, it's a Is third set right? of teeth. It's what we refer to uh, you know, in the office as a third set of teeth. You know, my, my, my mother, I'll, I'll bring it up for just a moment, but you know, her doctor and everybody's saying, you gotta have fiber. You know, 74 years old, you gotta have fiber, you gotta have fiber, but good luck, and she's a denture wearer, good luck eating broccoli when you have dentures. You can't do it. Could they eat things like broccoli with these? And Absolutely. would you even recommend it? Absolutely. Is that right? So Absolutely. they could eat anything, just like a regular set of teeth? They could. With these, what we actually have to tell patients is that they have to be careful because they can bite harder with these teeth, with these implant supported teeth than they could with their natural teeth. Their natural teeth have nerves that let them know when they're biting down hard. Oh, these, interesting. These don't have nerves. So if there were a seed in there, they're gonna... They're gonna crush that seed. The seed's gonna be crushed. Uh, <laughs> they're gonna win. The, the, the seed's gonna be crushed, but they actually there's a bit of a learning curve where you have to experience the fact that you're biting strong. I like to bring up the old analogy of Jaws from 007. Yeah, you yeah. Know, the metal teeth, and he could bite through anything on that show. And so when you get dental implants, they're stronger than your natural teeth. Even if you're 75, I mean, even look, 75 is young today, 
But 75, 80 year olds? Absolutely. Same thing, I mean, they could. So when you get older in life, your muscles aren't as strong as they were when you were younger. So you're gonna have less force being applied to the denture. Okay. But comparatively to natural teeth, you can bite harder on a dental implant. And uh, so people, and how soon could they eat? Okay, so if somebody's watching the show right now, a denture wear, right? In a perfect world, everything works out right, maybe 70 year old. How soon from today could they get their implants and start eating? You, if you came into our office and you said, I have to have this in a, in a few days because I've got a wedding coming up, we could do it. Is that right? Absolutely. Are they ever left without teeth? No, no, we can, it, well, if they're, if they're already are in a denture, it, it might be that we can actually just modify your existing denture or we might say, look, this denture is a little bit old and it's worn a little bit. And we'd like to give you a brand new, more cosmetic looking denture, a, 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 a fancy. So you denture. could use their existing uh, Absolutely. denture. And so, right? yeah. So you're using the exact same denture that they walk in with. So one of the things that people come in and talk to me about is their upper denture. Okay. And so, uh, you know, initially when you get that upper denture, there's a learning curve and it's, it's, you have to use denture adhesives and you have to, the teeth or the gums are remodeling around it and it takes time to get used to that. But what you lose out when you have an upper denture is that it covers the whole roof of your mouth. Okay. Well, with dental implants, you don't have to cover the roof of your mouth. If you look back oh, at this okay. model here, okay. so with an implant supported denture, there is no plastic on the roof of the mouth and thus you can enjoy foods the way you used to. Is this one of those things where when it's all done, the patients go, I should have done this years ago. If we could give people two implants and let them use it for the weekend. Like a Friday free. Like a Friday, <laughs> come in, try in the implants. A and test drive, okay. Test drive, come back on Monday, let us know. They'd come back on Monday and they'd say, you're not getting these back. I'm Is that right? Them. Absolutely. And then we are almost out of time. What are the frequently asked questions? Patients come in, maybe it's a denture where, what do they want to know? What do they ask every time? Well, every time they ask, what's the pain going to be? How much pain is it going to be? It does sound painful. It does sound painful. And I, and I always tell them, you are going to be so surprised. And they look at me like this. <laughs> and there's this look in their eyes like, I, I, I want to believe you, but I'm just not sure. And it's not until we're done with placing the implants, which only takes a matter of minutes, by, by the way, because we use the guided surgery. I did one the other day. It took me under three minutes to place the dental implant. And that was with the extraction of the tooth. We took the tooth out and placed the dental implant under three minutes. And the patient couldn't believe it she could almost hold her breath for three minutes. Now, isn't it true, but I mean, because you do IV sedation. We should mention that. That's right. Very few, probably less than 10% of all dentists do IV sedation. That's correct. Is that right? That's correct. Okay, so is it true, I think I t your wife told me this, that sometimes the procedure's done, and they go, that's it? Almost is that every, true? Almost every time. Really? IV sedation is, is uh, safer than pill sedation, it and is? it's more effective. It's safer because we can give reversal drugs immediately. We have an intravenous line straight okay. into, the, into the body. So where with a pill, you take a pill, you have to digest it. So if you had a problem with pill sedation, it's gonna take some time before you can recover from that. But so with IV sedation, and we do all our cases with a certified nurse anesthetist who's in the, in the operatory the entire time, uh, and it's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So they're wonderful. really, I mean, I mean, this is just, uh, so it's IV sedation, so they don't feel anything. They don't remember anything, they she don't did. feel anything. What's, and what's the next day like? Just a little sore? Just a little sore. I mean, virtually painless? Virtually painless. Maybe some over-the-counter uh, ibuprofen. Okay, so that's the, uh, okay, so you're on the consult, they wanna know about pain, what's another question? Patients always wanna know, how long is it gonna take? And so each case is, is, is typically unique because no one is exactly like everyone else, but we know exactly how long these things are gonna take now. The science has worked out. Because of your CT? Because images. of our guided surgeries, we can minimize the times but even if there are times that are required for healing, we know exactly how long those times are. So patients, oftentimes they have big events. They have uh, holiday events or Christmas, Christmas events or uh, weddings, and they wanna know, can I get this done for this event uh, or an anniversary or something? And so we can tell them with, with great certainty when we can be done and meet their needs. Now we haven't talked a lot about smiling, but when you're done with these procedures, patients smile more? Did they tell you that? Yes, they do. Uh, in our office, our slogan is find your smile. And what we, what we believe with, with that is that you should be doing in life what you enjoy to do, what okay. you enjoy doing. And when you're doing those things, you should be smiling. 
And if you're not smiling, then you should come to us and let us help you. Because if you're not smiling while you're doing the things in life that you enjoy doing, you're being held back. And that's not a good place to be. Good. All right. Now, you have uh, photos on your website if people want to uh, make more. So if somebody calls, they're going to get to see you. They're going to get to see your wife. How yep. does that work? Take me through that process. Call the office or email us through our website. And we'll bring you in for a consultation. We can show you the models in person. You can put your hands all over them. We can show you the scans. And we can talk about the entire process and come up with a customized solution for you. What about the people that are watching this that they've been told, because you said that most people are candidates, but they've been told by another doctor, another dentist, not enough bone for dental implants. What do you say to them? They're watching this. You know, Randy, we hear those kinds of things all the time. And what we find is that if, if we take a look at them, we can usually come up with a solution that will meet their needs. We, we see it all the time. And Have you done implants on people that were told elsewhere? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Told you can't, we, we can't fit one in here. And when we take our special scan, our special cone beam CT scan, and we see the volume of bone, we come up with solutions that other people might not have had. Other, other providers, other dental providers might not have been able to see that volume and they wouldn't have been able to provide that service. So no more dentures, obviously. In no. your town. You want to wipe out the dentures as we know them here in, uh, in North Carolina. Yes, that's true. I'd like to make it my personal mission in life to wipe out dentures in North Carolina. I think they're, they're very, very poorly adapted to people. I think people don't like them. In fact, I know that people don't like them. And I'd like to offer them solutions that will make them happy, make them smile. Okay, good. I want to thank you for coming on the show. Very thank interesting. You, Great stuff. You've been watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like to see this interview again online, you can just uh, put in Dr. Stanley on our website and you can see it again. For now, I wish you could help. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.